Hello everyone! An often overlooked aspect when making video games is communication, collaboration and version tracking. In this video I'm going to show you the process I'm taking in order to work together with someone and also to be more organized with my own project. Now, let's assume that I'm working on a video game together with a friend and I start some 2D scene and here I create let's say a sprite 2D and add an icon to it and everything is nice and I want to share this with my friend so that he can work on uh, from this point on the project further. How would I do that? Well, a straightforward way you would think of would to simply go into this directory and copy everything and send it to your friend and afterwards he can work and then he can send it back and so on. While this is nice, your project could get really complicated. Maybe your friend wants to work at the same time as you on the project and uh, it would be really hard to manage that way. Now, this is where Git comes in. It basically lets you take snapshots of your project and you can have those snapshots and share them with your friend or you can uh, even return to a snapshot if you're not happy with the changes you have already done and get back to a state in which you are happy with your project. Let's see how we use it. Now before moving on, make sure that you have Git installed, VS Code and that you have a GitHub account. In the description I have attached links on how to get each of those. Well, first of all I am going to simply initialize a Git repository here. And I'm simply going to right click and click on git bash here. And here I'm going to simply write git init. Now that I have written git init, you will see here a dot git folder. And if you do not have it here, make sure to go to view here and have these hidden items selected. And we are basically in a local repository. Now, if I wanted to push these changes so that my friend could use them later, I would have to use GitHub. GitHub is a place in which I can create multiple repositories, which are basically just some small projects on which I'm working. And you can share these repositories with your friends. You can share them with anyone around the world. Okay, so let's just create a new repository, a public repository. I'm going to click on new here and let's call it, uh, yeah, some repo. Doesn't really matter too much. I'm going to have it set to public. And I'm going to not change anything here because we already have some stuff locally. I click on create repository. Now that our repository has been created, what we have to do is to simply connect it with our local repository. So how do we do that? Well, we go locally into our directory, right click, and this time we are going to click open with code. Why do we open it with code? Because we are going to do some other interesting things from here. Now we need to open a bash terminal, so I'm going to click on terminal and new terminal and here you can simply go on git bash. This is basically the same as opening the git bash from here, so no big changes until now. And now we can actually manage our project. How are we going to do this? Well, first of all, we need to add a remote to it. We are basically telling that this local project has to communicate with something that is remotely somewhere. In order to do that, we are simply going to come here and it's giving us a command git remote add something, copying it and I added the remote. Okay, this is great. Now the next step would be to set our files to the GitHub repository. Now, how would we do that? Well, we can do it in a few ways and I'm going to show you both ways at the same time because you might like one way or another way and either way is really fine. So the first thing we can do is to say here a nice command which is git status. Now this is telling us that we have some untracked files. What does that mean? Well files that are not tracked are basically files that are not going to be included in the snapshot that we will take. So if we want to include all these files, we can add them separately or we can add them all at once. And I'm going to show you both ways. So let's say that we want to add icon.svg. We would simply write git add and you see here that we have some information file. So icon.svg. If I write git status right now, 
we can see that we have a file that is tracked. So it is with green and the other ones are with red. Now, there is another way if you do not wish to use the console. We can go here to source control and you see that already something is uh, interesting here. We have four changes, but we can see that icon.svg is under staged changes. Now, why is that? Well, because a second ago, we simply added this icon.svg to be tracked. If I'm doing this again, let's say for project.goto, I'm going to write git add project.goto. This is going to be added to stage changes as well. Well, instead of writing all these, we can simply go here and click on plus and click, click on plus again and again, and we can click on minus if we want. And again, we can track and untrack files as we please. Now, if we wanted to not click on each separate file every time, we could simply say git add dot, and this would basically put everything under stage changes, or we could come here and add changes, click on the plus here, and add everything again at stage changes. Now, this is nice, but we are not there yet. We need to create a snapshot of these changes. So again, we can do this in two ways, through the console or through the source control window. And let's first do it through the console. So now that I have added, let's say, uh, let's not add everything. I added three, these three files. I can simply write git commit and we might need a message for this, so I'm going to simply write dash m. This comes from message. And here, let's say uh, some commit. This could be basically anything. Now, the commit might ask us to tell them who we are, and uh, we need to tell them our email and our name. I already have a configuration for that. I'm going to add it for me, but you can simply run these commands with your email and your name. And now that we added the configuration, I can again write git commit dash m some commit, and we see that these things have been committed. What does that mean again? It means that we have taken a snapshot. And to better visualize that snapshot, we can go to extensions and look for git graph. And here on git graph, we could say here install to install this extension. I already have it installed. And Again, while clicking on source control, we can go here to this little icon and see that we have some commit here. Now, if we wanted to create another commit, let's say that we wanted to also add these files, we could do it this time from the interface, click here and write here a message, let's say another commit and click commit here. And you see now in the Git graph that we have some commit and then we have another commit. Okay, now the last thing we have to do is to actually push these changes. Now, in order to push these changes to this external repository, we have a command, which is git push. And this will basically take everything that is committed and push it to a branch on our main repository. Again, this can be done in another way through the source control if we simply say publish branch. Let's try to do it from uh, the console because this should be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to write git push and you see that we do not have an upstream branch. What does that mean? It means that on our remote repository, there is no branch named uh, master on which we could push. So let's simply say git push set upstream origin master. We see that the push has been successful. And now if we go back to our repository, maybe we refresh it you see that the changes are already here. Now, this is fantastic because now if we share this repository with someone, they can simply come here and let's say copy this URL to the clipboard and go, for example, to another folder and open git bash, and simply say git clone and paste this. Now, when you're pasting git bash, you have to make sure that uh, control V does not work. You have to uh, you have to press insert or shift insert, or you can simply right click and paste here. So be careful about that. But yeah, other than that, if we now close our bash, we see that we have some repo and it basically has everything that we already had. Now while communicating with others is useful itself, we still need to know why this is good for us as a solo developer. So 
Why could this be good? Well, Git offers another feature, which is called branches. For example, let's say that we have here a working version of our project. Basically, we want to add some changes, but we are afraid to do those changes because we might break it, and then we would have to spend a lot of time to fix it, and yeah, that would be pretty hard. How could we manage that with Git? Well, we could simply create, let's say, another branch. Git branches are basically, if you want to be fancy about it, like different timelines through which your project can go. So let's see it in practice. First of all, let's save our current scene because I remember we did not save it. Now we have a note to the PSCN. Let's add those changes. So scene commit. Now, since we have a snapshot of our master and our scene, we know that we can always get back to this point. So we can start experimenting. Let's say we wanted to add some cool new feature. We wanted to duplicate the sprite four times and I don't know, spread it around or something. <laughs> Doesn't matter too much, but we have now a new version of our scene. Now this version and maybe some other changes that we would like to do could be sent to a different branch where we experiment things. So we can simply write git checkout dash b and the name of the branch. So let's say new cool feature. Okay, we checked out to that branch. And now if we do the same process as we did before, we are going to push our changes to that branch. Currently, you see that our new cool feature branch is at the same level as the master branch because we have no changes on it. But now if I'm going to add my node to the scene, and let's say new feature, commit, we see that the new feature is currently up here on the new cool feature branch and the master scene is behind our branch. Okay, if we save this, uh, now we basically have our feature. Now, if we don't like it, let's say we experimented and nothing worked, we can simply go back to whatever we had before on master. So let's say just right click on master here and check out branch. We checked out the branch and we click reload here and we see that our scene loaded back to the initial state that it had before. We didn't have to go through each sprite to delete it and you can imagine how you could have worked on something much more complex and you wouldn't have had to go back and delete everything for that project. Okay, but one other thing to do would be the other way around, to like what we have done, to like the feature that we completed and to want to add it to our main timeline. And how would we do that? Well, let's go back to our current branch. And now that we are on this branch, we can merge it back into master. Now, how do we merge? Well, well, we could simply say git checkout master and git merge new cool feature. Oh, sorry, git merge. And basically what we did was to take everything that's on new cool feature and add it here to master. And now we are on master. And if we reload, we see that we have our feature, our changes already here. Okay, so this might have been quite a lot, but it's the basic of what you should understand when working with Git. There are obviously plugins that you could work with, uh, with Godot. I tried those plugins, but they didn't seem to work as flawlessly and as easily as Git Bash and as uh, this source control window from VS Code. And additionally, this is a really common practice in programming in general. So having this information would help you if you would like to get a job for something different, not necessarily video game programming. Okay, but this is basically it. If you have any problems, you can leave a comment and I'll try my best to help you. If you like this and if you want a more in-depth guide regarding Git, then you can also leave a comment about that and I will make a new video on Git. Because Git is pretty big and a lot of features can be discussed there. Hey, thanks for watching and see ya in the next one.